And so I'll just invite us to go ahead and just center ourselves for a moment on the sound of the bell. I want to officially welcome everyone to Fairfax Community Church on this, the first full day of spring. As we celebrate both the spring equinox and the spring renewal that happens in our own hearts. So let us just have a gathering prayer this morning. Gracious and loving one, divine spirit that brings life and renewal to all things. We are grateful for your presence with us this morning. May the promise of springtime renew the soil of our own hearts. And may this entire worship service be consecrated to your sacred presence, that as we gather in community together, we may be a dwelling place for you, enriched to share your love with the world. We dedicate this time to you in your many names. Amen. And so if you have a candle with you, I'll invite us to light our sacred candles together this morning, reminding us that we are indeed connected in spirit. And I am lighting our lotus candle this morning as we will have some special lotus poem, lotus song reminded of the lotus bloom as we are together. And so as we gather, I invite us also then to say together the call to worship. printed in your bulletin, which is a welcoming of spring, a celebration of spring. So let us say this together and intentionally feel ourselves welcoming the new light of spring. It is written by Joyce Rupp. Our planet tilts toward the sun, stronger sunlight and more of it warms our days and our spirits. Let us rejoice. Green shoots push their way up from the once frozen hardened soil. They have survived the winter and announced their aliveness. Let us rejoice. Seeds that fell from wild plants and hid themselves under leaves now take root and begin to grow, a signal of Earth's resurrection, let us rejoice. People everywhere taste the freshness of spring's brand new arrival. Their grumpiness lessens and their hearts grow lighter and freer. Welcome spring, let us rejoice. So I'll invite us to continue to rejoice as we share together our embodied prayer practice. So if you are willing and able, I'll invite you to stand. If not, you can do this modified where you are sitting. And so I invite us first to once again, just stretch up. Feel ourselves tall like a big spring tree. Pick your favorite. Maybe it's flowering. And then expand yourself and feel your whole body spirit open, bigger than the room around you. Expand. Remembering to breathe and then wrap yourself up again. Give yourself a little hug, pat yourself on the back. And slowly roll over and let your head drop and just swing there a little bit. 
whoo, and let anything go that you need to release back down into the earth to become compost. Just let it all go as you swing there and let it become compost into the earth. And then slowly roll up again. And feel your legs again being like roots going down, down, down into the earth and connecting you to the core of the earth. And then feel your arms like branches reaching up, extending towards the sky, towards the light. Feel yourself bringing in some of the sunlight from the sun. And bring that down into your being, that sunlight. And then once again, wrap yourself up and give yourself a hug and just bring it all into your being. And then release anything else down into the earth. And kind of shake yourself down into the earth a little bit. Feel yourself connected and shake anything else that you need to. Maybe shake a hand, shake another hand, shake a leg, shake another leg, shake whatever you're sitting on, shake out your voice. La, 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 la. And continue to breathe. Just feel your body move around and stretch in whatever way it needs to, remembering that you are a fluid being actually. Our bodies are more fluid and flexible than we think they are. That means we can also go with the flow, shift with the changing seasons, be part of the movement of growth around us. So just feel yourself flowing for a moment. Breathing as you do. Feel wherever your body needs to move or stretch, or flow. And then feel your heart expand. Bring it back in. Feel your heart expand. Bring it back in. And just gather all that up into your heart and your belly as you take a deep breath. Let that center. And then I invite you to imagine, take your one hand and imagine that this hand is a little seed. You feel it form into a ball. What is the potential of that seed? What life force does it wanna give birth to? And then take that hand and feel it kind of in your belly. And then as you take a deep breath, just open it up and feel it reach towards the light and expand and grow. And then exhale and let it fall back into the earth. And then once again, put it into a ball and feel your seed self. And then inhale. Reach toward the light and then exhale, release and let it go. And one more time, feel yourself, your seed self, your fist. Feel it open, take a deep breath in. Reach towards the light. And then exhale, let it go. Even as our hands contract and expand and open, we know that we have this in ourselves, the ability to open, to release to be part of that cycle. We also have seeds to share, right? One seed becomes many seeds as the plant grows. So now I invite you to imagine that you have all sorts of beautiful seeds in your bushel basket, which is part of your own being. Maybe they're seeds of promise, seeds of hope, seeds of peace, love, joy. So I invite you to imagine yourself scooping up some seeds with the in-breath and then scattering them with the out-breath. And imagine what seeds with each scattering you want to share. Gather up some seeds and scatter them. Seeds of joy. Seeds of peace. Seeds of hope. Seeds of kindness, 
seeds of love, seeds of justice. Just play with that for a moment, breathing in and sharing the seeds. And imagine what seeds you want to sow. And imagine them being watered and flowered as they land. Being part of the greening, the flowering, the coloring of the hillside as we grow seeds of love and compassion, justice and freedom. So then once again, take a deep breath and gather all that back into yourself. And exhale. And feel once again, these seeds growing inside yourself. Seeds of love, compassion, freedom, justice that you have to share with the world. And then again, let us take a deep breath. And as you feel ready, you can come back to your seat. And just invite us again for just a moment to just kind of keep breathing, to feel that life force all through yourself. to feel it being shared with all the cells in your body. Feel that vitality of spring that our very breath helps us to renew. And our theme for Lent has been reaching toward the light. Today is the light of transformation. And so Robin O'Brien, we officially, now that we've officially started, welcome Robin. And she is a singer, songwriter, musician, guitarist, and we're so grateful that she's able to join us live from I'm her home. To be here. And so she has this song about uh, breathing the light, this chant that she wants to um, share with us and that we can uh, sing along muted from our own songs today. Yes. Good Let morning. Go. So together we're going to breathe the living light and we will do that muted. That's the paradox of Zoom as we will mute our voices and sing together. It's very simple. Breathe the living light. Breathe the living light. And as you get to you get a sense of the melody, join. You can harmonize. Um, feel free.
So beautiful. Robin, thank you so very, very much. Indeed, a gift. And so I invite us once again to take another deep breath and to feel that living light pour through us. Feel it in your heart, in your soul, in your being. And ultimately, as we breathe this in, I believe this is at the essence of what we share in prayer. We breathe in the living light and then we share it with others. We cast it out, we imagine it surrounding each of those we love, the places of need in our world, our planet, our society. So let us then continue to breathe the living light as we share our prayers as a community. As is our custom, we will address God however is most comfortable for us, whatever language you use for God, and then share our prayer. And then at the end, simply say, God in your grace, and we say together while muted, you hear our prayers. So let us share the prayers of the community that we want to lift up this morning. Our prayers. Precious and ever present, holy presence. Thank you for the healing that I'm experiencing day by day. Help me to be patient at the speed with which it occurs. And for the, the improvement for my friend LaRue. I also want to pray this morning for so many people that I've spoken with as we go through a change in our routines, as we, as we try to deal with, okay, some of us have been vaccinated, some of us haven't, we have a bunch of different views about what that means. And so many seeing uh, th that this transition seems so difficult so many choices, so little clear knowledge. I ask that you help us all to find our way, knowing your presence, knowing there are no mistakes and that your love is at the source of all that we experience. In your many names, God in your grace, you hear, you hear our, our prayers. prayers. Your infinite light of love, prayers of gratitude for both my boys, Gabe and Theo being restored to health. And please bless them with peace and energy and focus as they catch up with their semesters that didn't slow down while they were sick. God, in your grace, you hear our prayers. You hear our prayers. And loving and gracious God, as we gather and seek to sow the seeds of compassion, we ask that they may be spread across our nation and world. We do pray in a particular way today for the Asian American community, for people everywhere who live in fear of prejudice, for how it is so mistakenly been connected with COVID. We pray too for those who may be suffering economic, 
consequences of this economic downturn in such a way that makes them want to scapegoat. So we pray for healing, we pray for restoration, we pray for health, we pray for courage, we pray for protection, and we pray that the seeds of compassion, justice, kindness, empathy, and understanding may sow a far greater field of grace, and may that in itself protect those who are most vulnerable, that they can live with confidence and comfort as we continue to walk towards this new birth for ourselves as a humanity, praying great spirit for your guidance as we seek to transform ourselves into the best version of ourselves so that we can live in the light. We dedicate all of these prayers and those who have been spoken and unspoken in our hearts and trusting them to you and your gracious presence today. God, in your grace, you hear our prayers. And so let us continue to pray as we pray the prayer of Jesus. Again, beginning the prayer with the word avun, which is the word that Yeshua used in Aramaic to address God. And you can also use whatever word fits best for you as we share the prayer of Yeshua together. Avun, creator, birther of the cosmos. Your presence is infused throughout all existence. We honor you with many names. Your realm is within the human heart. We accept life for all that it can be on earth as throughout all creation. May we continue to draw sustenance from the earth and may we receive forgiveness as we seek to forgive others. May we ever move from separation toward union to live in grace with love in our hearts forever and ever. Amen. And so as we transition to our readings today, is there someone who would like to uh, Sing the Shema this morning. Thank you, Dean. Is there someone who would like to read the Genesis passage? Thank you, Nancy. And uh, would someone like to read the poem? Okay, thank you, Ruth. Great. Please sing after me the words of the Shema. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Shema Israel. Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Sacred text number one is from Genesis 17, 1 through 7, and verses 15 and 16. God's covenant with Abraham. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am El Shaddai. Walk with me and be trustworthy. I will make a covenant between us and I will give you many, many descendants. Abram fell on his face and God said to him, 
but me, my covenant is with you. You will be the ancestors of many nations. And because I have made you the ancestors of many nations, your name will no longer be Abram, but Abraham. I will make you very fertile. I will produce nations from you and kings will come from you. I will set up my covenant with you and your descendants after you in every generation as an enduring covenant. I will be your God and your descendants, God, after you. God said to Abraham, as for your wife, Sarai, you will no longer call her Sarai. Her name will now be Sarah. I will bless her and give you a son from her. I will bless her so that she will become nations and kings of people will come from her. The Times We're Living In by Robin Rose Bennett. It is not so easy to see what is birthing beneath the surface of the world, getting ready to emerge like a newborn crowning. As old ways of domination and violation fight to hold sway, a great birthing has begun, the birth of a new way of being in the world, a way of reconnection and shared power a way of cooperation and love. We are flowering out of the mud of our darkest time of separation, evolving from the time of me to the time of we. This time is difficult, yes, but it is also juicy and joyous. It is not easy to soar through mud, but mud is rich and fertile, and out of mud, the lotus blooms. Thank you so much for those beautiful readings. And I do love this poem for so many reasons. One of it is it reminds us that we can't always see what's going on beneath the surface, can we? Sometimes something is happening or birthing and we have to trust and have patience that it will emerge. Hopefully all of us have, or most of us are tending our little basil seeds, which has been our Lenten project to take basil seeds and plant them in the soil. And you probably had to have some patience as the seeds were germinating. I've had to have some patience too, because I forgot when I dropped off all the supplies to Tara to keep some of the soil and seeds and everything for myself. So when I first planted my seed, it wasn't in very good soil and it was dry and I forgot to water it. And so I had to actually toss out that batch and start again. So mine is kind of a late bloomer. I don't actually have any seeds yet. I did go out and buy some special soil and I've tried to do everything right this time. So I keep tending it. Is anything happening? Is something happening under there? I'm very tempted to just dig the dirt around to see, but I know that would probably wreck it. So I'm trying to have patience and hope that something's happening that I can't see. While simultaneously trying to nurture it into new growth. That seems to be the essence of the paradox, isn't it? We're supposed to have trust. We're invited to have trust and faith that something is emerging. While paradoxically at the same time, trying to provide just the right nurturing environment for that new growth to actually grow. We can then kind of be like the midwives who are trying to help bring this new birth into being. The other thing that occurs to me about seeds, the miracle really of seeds, whether it be a basil seed or a lotus seed, is that it has to actually kind of let go of its seed self its own individual seed identity 
for something new to be born from it, doesn't it? That seed eventually cracks open and the shoot comes from that. Now, as we know, if the plant keeps growing, ultimately it multiplies itself, doesn't it? It becomes a plant that later flowers that then scatters multiple seeds. It makes more of itself as it allows itself to grow. But first, it has to let go of just its individual seed identity to allow something new to be born through it and from it. I think that shift is part of the transformation, which of course, as we know, requires trust, doesn't it? We have to trust that in the letting go, something new will be born. It occurs to me that part of what we're trusting in is the very cycle of life itself. Clarissa Pinkola Estes in her book, Women Who Runs With the Wolves, calls it the life-death life cycle. And she says that in the West, so often we just cut it off. We truncate one whole third of it and think it's life-death, life-death, when it's really not. It's life-death life. If we're able to surrender to that part of the process, it will always inevitably lead to the cycle of rebirth in some form. We just might not know exactly what form that will take. To me, this is also the essence of what we celebrate in spring. The darkness and dormancy of winter is not the end. All we have to do is look around. Oh my gosh. There are, the hills are graining and alive. Fruit trees are fruiting. Cherry blossoms everywhere on different kinds of fruiting, flowering trees. The poppies are starting to emerge from the hillsides. Every time it, it never ceases to amaze me. It's like a miracle <laughs> that out of this kind of darkness and dormancy, new life can return. Maybe that's one of the things we're invited to trust is just the larger cycle itself. Yes, sometimes there is mud. Sometimes the mud can be fertile and nurturing. Sometimes it can be painful. It can be hard. It can be scary. It can be all sorts of things. And perhaps when we're in the darkness of the mud, we're invited to trust that the larger part of the cycle is also there holding us. Maybe that's part of what can allow us to surrender to whatever we're feeling in the mud that allows then the light to come back in, to trust that some kind of rebirth will indeed happen. The other thing that might allow us to trust the process of transformation is to know that even though the seed lets go of part of itself, I don't believe it ever loses its core essence. It's true identity, you could say which is really that the whole plant is always contained inside the seed. Even if we think about a caterpillar that goes through its whole metamorphosis process, even to the point of liquefying inside of that cocoon as it surrenders to its butterfly self, perhaps part of its caterpillar essence is also there too. Perhaps both are contained inside the other. Part of the caterpillar self in the butterfly and the butterfly self in the caterpillar. After all, if we look at a butterfly closely, its core is still a bit like an aerodynamic caterpillar with wings. So perhaps part of what allows us to trust in the various transitions of our life is that the core essence of ourselves will still be there even as we surrender and let go. There could be all sorts of transitions that support this kind of transformation that feel like a shift in identity. It might be when we make a major move or move away to college or get married or have a child or change careers or even retire. Those can feel like transformation processes as shifts in identity but we might also connect with the fact that our core essence is still there, even with these external changes that happen. There might be more subtle shifts as we let go of an old belief system to embrace a new paradigm. I think we see this around us in society as a whole. 
as we go through this process of transformation, seeking greater enlightenment and justice, sometimes there is a bit of mud, tension, discord in that process. And hopefully there is also the core essence of seeds that are still there, humanity, kindness, compassion, that all link us together as children of God. It occurs to me that this is true, this connection to the core essence of identity and the various name changes that happen in the Bible that also represent transition and transformation. We noticed this last week when we talked about the transition of Saul to Paul. You could say he let go of his seed self identity, which was him as a single person that was at that time caught in a paradigm of persecution. And he allowed himself to expand when he broke open on the road to Damascus and then became a flowering plant that spread so many seeds <laughs> to so many people throughout his ministry. He surrendered to a larger call, a larger vision that God had for him. It occurs to me when we think about his name change from Saul to Paul, there's in English anyway, there's only one letter difference. It's a total shift in identity for him. And yet maybe there was some part of the core essence of him that was always there, that's still there in that transition. We notice the same thing is true for Abraham and Sarah. The core of their old name is still there. Abe to Abraham, Sarai to Sarah. They too were invited to transform from their identity connected to their father's homeland to respond to this call that God had for them to go to a new land, to become as numerous as the stars in the heavens, to share their gifts with a whole new nation. Perhaps what allowed them to make this transition to answer this call was their own trust in God's covenant with them. God essentially said to them, I will be your God and you will be my people. And I hear that as also saying, I'm never actually going to leave you or abandon you. You might go through a lot of mud in the process, but I will always be with you. That may have been part of what allowed them to set out and follow this new vision in the first place. Now, when we talk about Abraham and Sarah, we have to just note the part of the story that unfortunately has been sometimes used in a way that is damaging to others to say that the covenant means that they were God's chosen people and other people weren't. And as I look at the whole of scripture, I see that ultimately I believe God is saying much more than that. I believe God is saying, ultimately, God is a God of liberation and justice, and that the covenant is for all God's people to remember that we are all children of God. So again, it may be this trust in this covenant that the spirit of God will be with them no matter what, that was part of what allowed them to trust and set out in the first place. That doesn't mean that they were promised a rose garden because they weren't. They went through a lot of trials and tribulations, again, a lot of mud in the process for seeing this finally realized. But perhaps it was the trust that allowed them to do this in the end. After all, just like our little pot and that sometimes we can't see what's going on underneath the surface, they also couldn't see for a long, long time that this ball was moving forward or that the promise was going to be fulfilled. When God first spoke to Abe before he was Abraham, he was 75 years old. That is when God first shared with him this vision. He is almost a hundred before Sarah actually gets pregnant. That's 25 years. How were their descendants going to be as numerous as the sands on the seashore, or the stars in the heavens, if Sarah couldn't get pregnant. There must have been a lot of internal wrestling along the way, questioning, wondering if God had abandoned them. And yet somehow they kept finding a way back to their core essence 
their core connection in God and this covenant where God said, ultimately, I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to be with you in the mud, in the dark times, and allow that to be part of this rebirth. That perhaps allowed them to stay connection to the vision that they had that God gave to them that allowed them to keep going. And that to me returns us again to the poem. Out of the mud, the lotus blooms. Out of the challenging situations or the darkness of winter, something new comes. So that invites me to ponder, what is the lotus that we want to have bloom from this time? Whether it be from this last year or just this last season, and how can the hope of that vision move us forward? And how can trusting that God will be with us in it, even just trusting the larger life cycle of spring and winter, life, death, life, give us hope as we are the midwives of the new beginning? So I invite us actually just to take a moment to ponder those questions. If you are willing, I invite you to just close your eyes for a moment and just take a deep breath. And to first let all of those images settle. The image of the seeds sprouting, letting go of their own seed identity, answering to the call of something larger than themselves. Of a single seed transforming to many seeds through the process of growing and flowering and rebirth to our core essence being retained even when we go through transitions, even an identity shift and a name change and the promise that divine spirit will always be with us in the mud, no matter what happens, guiding us along the way. What shimmers for your own soul as you hear that? And what lotus flower do we want to see blooming for ourselves, for the community, for our nation, for the world? What butterfly wings do we want to grow? Do we hold the vision for that also moves us forward? I invite us to hold the hope and the fertile soil of all of those reflections and imaginings as we together tend this garden of transformation and rebirth. So taking a deep breath and then once again, let it in out on an extra long sigh. Notice whatever you're noticing in your own body, where you feel it in your body. Allow yourself to savor and have that. And then as you feel so moved, as is our custom, when we share the wisdom of the community here together. If there's something that you would like to share, I invite you to raise your hand and then unmute yourself when we can share that together. Yes, Ruth. Can you unmute yourself, Ruth? Yeah. I there you go. Oh, nope. No, it went back. <laughs> One more time. There you go. Okay. Um, I was so struck at the, with the thought that we so often are focused on the God out there and less able to be aware that we're made in God's image and of, of the presence of the divine within us. 
and um, how I, I, I remembered a, a dear friend of mine as he was dying said to me, not, not at the moment of his death, but in that time and said to me, stop doubting yourself, Ruth. Mm. And, and so that is what I, what I realize is, you know, kind of a, a, a lifelong task to mm. recognize I'm not the mud. Mm. You know, I'm, I am the, the seed and, I, and there are ways that I flower. And I was also strongly reminded of Kim Rosen's poem in Impossible Darkness, mm. which I'd just like to share, it's brief. Do you know how the caterpillar turns? Do you remember what happens inside a cocoon? You liquefy. There in the thick black of your self-spun womb, void as the moon before waxing, conceiving in impossible darkness, the sheer inevitability of wings. Wow. Wow, that's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. So yeah, you're not only the mud and you're not only the seed, you are also the butterfly and the lotus flower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. are the thing you are becoming. You are the, yeah, both sides of it. And to not, don't, don't doubt yourself, trust yourself. Yeah. Um, beautiful reflections. Thank you so much, Sherry. Others. Yeah, who's that? Yeah, Lynn. Yeah, I see Cindy can too, but you get to be next, Cindy. <laughs> um, a couple of little things. First of all, you opened with your story about how you messed up with your plant. And I have to tell you, I was laughing out loud. I, I just enjoyed that a lot. And then at the very end, what you did, um, and I think you did this last week too, was to kind of recap your sermon and for those of us with short little attention spans, I want to say mm -hmm. I appreciate that. <laughs> and um, but the more important thing, I guess, I want to say is that you know this is sort of for me and for those of us who are on, who are on Oasis, a continuation of looking deeply into that poem and into this theme. And um, and I really, really appreciate that. It's um, it's a big one for me and. Um, one of the things that I am, I'm struck by and that gives me, um, I guess, hope, a good feeling is that I love that I can be part of a, a church where planting seeds, where we can spread seeds a little farther than I can do it on my, on my own. Uh, that's I, I, that's big, really. Even even though we're a little tiny church, you know, we we multiply what we can do by uh, doing it together, and that's also, uh, you know, in some way why I got involved with MOC in the first place. So, um, I just wanted to set those things up. Yeah. You know. Again, okay. it's such an important point. Uh, that's true. Whenever we are in community, and especially spiritual community or an intentional community, we multiply our seeds, absolutely. And, and, we, and we once again, as this church community and as the church community is connected to MOC because we really give thanks to all the work that MOC is doing um, for justice and to sow those seeds of justice and compassion in our local communities in the world. And so we really thank you um, and everyone involved in that. And just for that reminder, just by being part of this community, we are part of a greater reservoir of seeds. Yeah, thank you. Cindy. I'm loving, I'm just loving the theme that we have this Lent. Um, the power of nature mm. speaks to me so much and I lived in it so deeply in my childhood and the the reassurance of spring and that it always comes a new way to year and and I was thinking about learning as a gardener you have to be patient because you plant something and you have to use your imagination to know what it might look like in a year 
Oh, and the awful uprooting for me of leaving my gardens behind. But, you know, that I can bring things with me. And I, I do have the potential of seeds that my grandfather grew, you know, mm. that they can be passed on. Mm. And that's so powerful. And I was thinking of the sermon today about how a little seed can make such a difference. And we can make such a difference in little ways, mm. just little things like when I let someone come in when I'm driving and I let someone join the road that's waiting on it, that makes me feel happy. Um, mm. It makes me feel happy. <laughs> and when someone does it for me, I feel happy and I'm more likely to do it again. And we sort of spread kindness mm. like that. Mm. And mm. I, and the ripples can go on and on. And I often have patients say to me, you mm. help me be a better mother and now I can be a better mother and then they will be able to be better parents. And, mm. you know, the ripples that go on and on and on in the seeds we sow. And I have one other mm. memory, if you, if you don't mind <laughs> me talking too much, but um, I used to run groups for very deprived children in mm the worst parts of London mm. and I, I ran a group often growing seeds and we would grow cress and it was amazing how many times even though I would explain it and explain it when it came to the day when we were going to make sandwiches they were horrified mm. I can't eat that that's not I'm not eating that that's grown out of dirt mm. I can't eat something that's come from dirt mm. <laughs> and we just miss so much if we don't understand about the cycle mm -hmm. and where they come from and how it all works. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. And look at all the seeds you sowed to them and right in teaching them about that. I'm sure they have gone on to remember that and to have more of a connection to the earth now. And um, that I love also what you're lifting up that we we can never know sometimes sometimes we don't always see the fruit of our seeds but we might still have planted them but also just that every little everyday kindnesses um the, that we forget the power of those um and the ripple effects that they have and that's a important reminder for all of us we we are all seed bearers in in ways that we may not always think that we are yeah beautiful thank you so much cindy Others. Is that a hand, Brad, or are you just holding your phone? Okay, <laughs> that's fine. If you don't, that's fine. Um, I'm just holding my phone. Sorry oh. about that. <laughs> Yeah. It's problem at all. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Great. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, Casey and Manoush. Um, I'm calling for the wisdom of this circle we are part of at Fairfax Community Church. It's been about over 20 years that I draw seeds, sprouting seeds everywhere everywhere, even on murals and my notebook, everywhere sprouting seeds are part of what I draw when I just doodle, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't doodle, I draw seeds, sprouting seeds. And the most important seed to me is the seed of peace. Mm -hmm. And it's more than 20 years that when I wake up or when I go to bed, um, I have just a very simple prayer which is uh, may peace prevail on earth and in the heart of humankind. Mm. And yet, it's very difficult to speak of that mm. because for 20 years and more, that's my thing. And I have not yet found a way to spread the peace. So I welcome any uh, insight, um, ideas, whatever is your heart speaking of that. Mm -hmm. So are you saying, Manoush, just so I understand you correctly, that this has been your prayer for 20 years, that you say the prayer before you go to bed, 
are you saying that, um, but because there isn't complete and total peace on earth yet, that it, that therefore it feels like the prayer is not effective? Yeah, probably it is. Um, also, until I find peace within myself, it may be more difficult to uh, spread the peace. But it's not impossible to start somewhere. Where to start? You know, okay, I can work within myself a lot. Right. How can I um, also offer mm -hmm. something of that is tangible and meaningful, that is of bringing forth more peace on this planet? Right, right. Well, can I just offer... Um, it actually makes me kind of teary when I think about it, that um, I deeply experience deep peace in your paintings. Deep, deep divine healing and peace. And um, I have uh, the Black Madonna right here on this window, and then I've got the Cosmic Mother right here. And just the other day, I was sitting in my grandmother's chair, uh, on our Kabbalah group and I was meditating on the Black Madonna and she brought me so much peace, so much healing, so much um, deep resonance and connection to divine spirit that that helped me transform what I was feeling, which helped me be more present to the Kabbalah class, which helped me receive that information that I needed. And your paintings helped me uh, and that it, those have the ripple effects that Cindy was just talking about is what I see. Every single person that has ever walked into our sanctuary and spent time with your paintings, even if they're not conscious enough to know what they're getting, I just about 100% sure they're receiving peace. There's a peace in that place. That's why I think it's so attractive to people to rent. So my invitation would be don't underestimate the incredible power of your creations. And as the, even the replicas of those creations are spread far and wide, um, they resonate, they have their own resonance that has a life that continues. So from where I sit, you have and are and continue to contribute incredible deep peace, which I am very grateful for because your work continues to feed my soul. Thank you, Kimani. Thank you, Manoush, and may you continue to spread the seeds. I have an heart's desire. Thank you. I have an assignment. Um, my main guide was not in the body anymore. Uh, she is in the spiritual realm. She gives me assignments. The painting of the children that you see at Fairfax Community Church is one of her assignments. She asked me to do three paintings. She asked me to do the children, the painting of love and the painting of peace. I am totally unable to paint the painting of peace. Thank you. Um, okay, can we hear you now? You froze up a little bit about after the painting of peace. Can anybody else? I see other people moving. So it looks like maybe your screen may frozen not anymore okay there we go good good so you so you you have so far you have been unable to paint the painting of peace is that what you're saying all right okay but then i also know that you've shared that you did paint the peacemakers right the grandmothers that were the people <laughs> right <laughs> um and so maybe that was part of the fulfillment of that assignment was painting the peacemakers which i'm sure that painting is also has ripple effects right? To many people. I didn't even know about the grandmothers until I found out about your painting. So I would, yeah, perhaps um, uh, maybe there is more of that um, in what you, and what's already within you. Um, so I'm going to invite us to honor that. And I'm going to actually invite us to um, uh, move on a bit um, because I am just so delighted um, that, uh, again, we have Robin with us. And um, when she and I met uh, a few weeks ago to talk about this Sunday, I shared with her, I already knew the poem I wanted to use. And she said, well, let me see if I can do something with that. So she actually wrote a song for us based on the poem 
um, that we uh, use today that she knew we were going to use. So again, such a treat and a delight to have you live, Robin. And so I invite us to continue to envision as we hear her singing and the, the words are a little bit further down in your bulletin, um, to continue to imagine what we want to envision um, giving birth to as we This birth beneath the surface of the world emerges like a newborn crowning and a brighter day is calling us, calling us forth to sing as one, to live and to listen with born as the lotus blossoms to a new day the lotus blossoms from the mud the lotus blossoms this way and the darkest time of separation is falling behind now we sing as one we love and we listen with love we are born and the blossoms to a new day the lotus blossoms from the mud the lotus blossoms we are born in the lotus blossoms to a new day the lotus blossoms from the mud the lotus blossoms So indeed, beautiful, Robin, what a beautiful way you have captured that through music, captured the essence of that and reminded us that we are all lotus blossoms, moving and reaching toward the light, being part of our own transformation and the transformation of the world. So may we, um, carry that in our hearts and say our closing prayer. And then if we um, like to spend a little bit more time talking with Robin or hearing about her music or responding to that, um, we can do that uh, at the end. Let us say our closing prayer blessing together. Oh, great mystery. Help us to receive the promise of your steadfast love so that we may surrender to the power of rebirth and experience true transformation in our lives. Trusting in your abiding presence, may we let go of anything that does not serve and allow new growth to emerge so that we may be a blessing to others, participating in the greater work of healing and transformation in the world. In your many names we pray. Amen. So again, as we take a deep breath before we sing our Alleluia, I just want you to think of one thing that you're going to carry with you from the service today. Maybe it's the image of yourself as a seed, having seeds of kindness to sow. Maybe it's the vision of the butterfly emerging, the lotus flower midwifing a new way of being in the world. Let us just hold that in our hearts for a moment. 
as we connect with the beauty and the bounty of the earth around us of the power of the renewal of spring. Trusting that we carry the light into the world as we go from here. So let us then sing together our uh, closing song, Alleluia, imagining that we are standing in a circle, holding hands, lifting up them up together at the end. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessings. May we sow the seeds of peace and love and joy with the world. May it be so. And so um, as we, we want to um, uh, share any announcements quickly before we log off and then have a little bit a uh, moment uh, with Robin. And we just want to share that as we know, um, Next week will be our beautiful, wonderful contemplative arts service. And we are so excited about that. And then we will, right after that, we actually enter into Holy Week and we will have a, a Wednesday evening service on Holy Week. I'll send out a little more information about that, but we're gonna be looking at the story of Mary Magdalene, um, anointing Jesus's feet and the preparation for Easter. And then, of course, April 4th itself is Easter. Feel free to invite any friends or relatives, even if they're long distance, you might want to um, share in that special occasion. And then this week, this Wednesday, we also have our book study. And um, did you want to say anything about that, Tara? Okay, here I am. Uh, just... Uh to say that we will be having our book study of uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates' book, Between the World and Me. I'm asking, I, I will be sending out an email today with uh, just you know a little handout so you know where we're going. I would suggest to folks who have already signed up and are listening um, that we will be emphasizing part one of the book for the first conversation. So um, I'm looking forward to it. 7.30 on Wednesday, every other week for uh, three meetings. Great, thank you. And the, those details are also listed in the bottom of your bulletin if you scroll down, uh, those dates and everything are there. So 